Okay, so here we go again. We're going to be surviving another 100 days inside of One Block Skyblock. Now, if you haven't already seen the previous 100 days, then I highly suggest you checking that out to make this video make a little bit more sense. But if you don't want to, that's completely fine too. Now, without any further ado, on with the video. Alrighty, so on day 101, aka my first day back in this blocky void, I, uh, I got my bearings by going around and just kind of remembering where everything is. And also saying hello to the best pet ever, my arctic fox named Peppermint. Look at this cutie, I've missed you buddy, I've missed you. And then after saying hello to Peppermint, I immediately got to work on breaking the magical block again. Hello old friend, what surprises do you have in store for me in this 100 days? Oh, do you look at that? Very nice. A, a chest, I'll take it. Oh, uh, another chest with a zombie villager spawn egg. Okay. Now, after mining the block for a little while, I remembered how hard it was to keep up with all of the random blocks just filling up your inventory every two seconds from mining this block. So I decided to start things out right uh, and tidy up the chests that I've got to store all my random block items in. That way I can, you know, have more space for the inevitable rain of blocks that will just continuously fill everything up. However, while storing everything away, uh, I kept getting confused about what went where, so I decided to use what little leather I had and made some item frames to start labeling my chests so that storing things was way easier. But I didn't have enough leather to make enough item frames to cover all my chests, so I went to bed and on day 102, I got up and started breeding and dispatching the cows for leather. And now luckily my sword has looting too, so it really didn't take me long. After grabbing all the leather I needed, I uh, made and placed down all the item frames and got to work on tidying this absolute mess of a storage system. Jeez, past, past poppers was a, was a slob, I tell you. Holy. And whilst I was sorting everything out, I found 33 leather in a chest, so uh, those cows um, disappeared for nothing. Anyways, after spending all day and night organizing everything, I was finally done and each item had its own organized space. So, on the morning of day 103, I decided to go and pay the villagers a visit to see what trades and stuff they had and whether they had anything useful to me still at this point. So, after the villager inspection, I got to work on our first project of this 100 days. To finish off all of my water aqueducts between my islands so that things look much safer and much better. So I made myself a brand new island that you all really wanted last time, Cobblestone Gen Island. Yeah, I, I know it doesn't really roll off the tongue or, or look good, but we need it. Anyways, after making this lovely new island, I mined cobblestone all night until the morning of day 104, when I'd ended up with quite a lot of cobble. So I grabbed some vines over at the jungle island and made myself some mossy cobble and then went to start work on the new aqueducts. But before we get onto that, I'd like to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is a free mobile game that will put both your strategy and battle skills to the test. With over 900 unique monsters to go out and collect with different rarities and elements. Plus, there's new monsters being added every single week. You can even breed monsters of different rarities and types to create something completely new and create the best team of monsters you can to go and challenge your friends or other monster masters in battle where you can conquer trophies, win rewards and reach the top leagues. One of the really cool features they added is the YouTuber Island, where you can go and find this guy who I'm sure you know, and plenty of your other favorite YouTubers monsters. So if you download the game using my link in the description or the QR code on screen right now, you'll get access to this free special starter pack of 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster Kauri. So what are you waiting for? Go download Monster Legends for free today. Okay, so now back to the aqueducts. I uh, managed to really work hard and get three of them done. And I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of forgot how good these things looked when I uh, had them all finished and neatly tucked in. It looks really nice. I think they're genuinely one of the best ideas I've ever had in a skyblock ever. So, uh, yeah, very nice. Moving on to day 107. After doing some building for a few days, I decided to return to doing my favorite thing in one block skyblock which was mining the block. Woo, yeah, you, you gotta love it. Uh, but no, I, I really needed iron and didn't feel like making an iron farm just yet. So uh, mining the block it is. After a while of mining this god-awful thing again, I actually ended up finding myself a piece of ancient debris, quickly followed by a vindicator that I ended up sniping from existence. But as soon as I got back, I uh, ended up getting swarmed by a load of endermites. And, well, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I don't really feel like I'm being welcomed back here. I, you know, I, I really don't think that they want me to be here for another 100 days, but I am, so they're just gonna have to deal with it. Anyways, I ended up finding a fish that I, uh, I tried to pick up but ended up shooting. I, I'm sorry, little buddy, but as compensation, okay, I saved it, and now he lives in a lovely aqueduct, so uh, happy ending for the fishy. Anyways, as night fell, we encountered our first monster party, and, well, it was actually pretty easy. It was just a couple of zombies and strays, N nothing too special, surprisingly. 
But after dealing with all those, I grabbed what little iron I'd found during the day and headed home to smelt it down and just chilled out for the rest of the night. And on the morning of day 109, I decided to head into the end where we were greeted by some survivors of a previous monster party. So uh, I dealt with them and headed into the portal to the outer end islands in search of a city that I could then take down and rebuild on an island in the overworld that would be geniusly called, are you ready for this? End City Island. Hey, I bet you didn't see that one coming. Anyways, I eventually found a city pretty quickly because I uh, actually have the elytra this time and began taking it down and putting it into my shulker. After destroying and boxing up enough of the city to rebuild it, I uh, headed home, made another island and got to work on building this beautiful city, but this time in the overworld. And well, I'm very happy with how this came out. You know, I think this one came out looking pretty good. What do you think? Anyways, after building the city on day 114, I got to work on chopping down and regrowing a load of oak trees specifically because I needed more wood to expand into more islands. So uh, yeah, day 114, just a very boring wood gathering day. And then on day 115, inspiration struck me and I ran over to my storage, grabbed a load of prismarine and got to work on yet another new island called Ocean Monuments I Hate You. Uh, and yeah, it's literally just a mini ocean monument that I think looks pretty cute. Uh, I don't know, I really like it. Now, it also, if you want to build this for yourself, I'll leave a link to the tutorial that I based it off of in the description below. Go check it out. Alright, so on the following few days, I mined cobble and got to work on pre-building an entire layer of new islands on the outside of the ones that I'd already made. Just to really make things easier for myself in the future. Now, I actually decided to use stone bricks for the floors and bridges because, well, I think they look better and I'm not as poor as I was in the last 100 days, so, uh, yeah, it's time for an upgrade. Although it did take a little bit longer to do and it ate up all my wood and cobblestone. And yes, I know they don't look amazing with just being stone brick and wood, but that's okay, I'll change them per island to what I build on the island, if that makes any sense. Anyways, after spending such a long time on building up these islands, they were finally done, and oh my, this area we have now is massive. So, we better get to filling all of these islands up ASAP. So on day 125, I headed into the nether and went exploring until I stumbled across a bastion that I uh, swiftly cleared out and looted. And there was some pretty decent stuff in here, so I'm not going to complain, it was, a, it was a nice find. Anyways, I looted it and returned home to store my stuff away and went to bed. Kind of a simple day on day 125. Okay, so on these next few days, my OBS just decided to not record any of it, so uh, let me give you a little diagram and explanation of what happened. So basically, I headed into the nether to find a fortress to grab some wither skelly skulls because I wanted to make a load of beacons, and because I'd never found a fortress last time. Anyways, I ended up finding one, but it was really doo-doo with, like, no areas for wither skeletons to spawn, so I just went out and found another one that ended up being absolutely huge, and, uh, well, there were a load of wither skellies here, so I spent, like, an hour or so just dispatching them for their skulls, and eventually I got 14, and then headed back home because I already had one in my chest from last time. I think I found the one last time in a chest or something, but, but anyways, and now we're back to normal, okay? Sorry about that, OBS just decided to not happen. So, on the day following the OBS incident, I uh, headed into the end and grabbed some obby from the pillars to set up a totally legit way to kill the wither, and then just kind of removed five withers from existence, but uh, when it got to the last one, I completely forgot to pick up the extra skull I had in the chest, so uh, I went and grabbed that, deleted the last wither, and boom, we now have five beacons and just need the resources to power them. So on day 132, I made myself a new diamond pickaxe and began enchanting it in an attempt to get silk touch on it, so that way I could go into the nether and grab a load of gold, because that was probably going to be the fastest way that I'd be able to get enough material blocks to power five full beacons. Not for one layer or two layers or three, but the four layer OP beacons. So I actually ended up getting silk touch pretty quickly and then uh, headed straight into the nether and began work on mining loads and loads of gold. Now let me tell you, this was extremely tedious and annoying. Especially with a random piglin just attacking you every other second or a gas blowing you to smithereens. It was just annoying. But after being in there and mining gold for what felt like a literal eternity, we finally had enough gold for five full beacons, depending if my math was correct. And, uh, well, I'm going to let you know, it wasn't. It was very wrong. It was so very, very wrong. It, I barely had enough for one beacon, okay? I don't know how I got this all wrong, all right? So I ended up actually grabbing this much when I, in fact, needed 
this much and uh, well there was only a small difference between the two anyways so i quickly headed back into the nether just to grab a little bit more gold and then built all my beacons except the only one that was actually a full four level beacon was the one in the middle and then the other ones were just shells so if anybody asks all right we, we built five full beacons all right just tell them not to look inside them otherwise they'll be gravely disappointed Anyways, I added some stained glass on top of them, and boom, here is the result of a good seven days of hard work. And I must say, okay, I must say, it is quite impressive how far we've come from just one lonely little block in the middle of nowhere to this absolutely beautiful island, okay? And we're going to keep making it even better. Alrighty, so in the following two days, I tended to my farm to stack up on resources to trade with the villagers, because I've got a really big project coming up that I'm going to need a lot of glass for. And, well, I'm pretty sure trading stuff with villagers for glass is the best way to get it. So, uh, yeah, I tended to the crops for a few days, and by the night of day 140, we were absolutely stacked on everything growable. So, on the morning of day 142, I headed over to the villager breeder and began stacking up on emeralds and then blowing them all on glass. Anyways, after filing for bankruptcy due to the amount of emeralds I spent on glass, I uh, stored it all away in this very lovely chest and then went to bed. And on day 143, I got to work on making a load of magenta dye. Now, I already have quite a lot from when I remade the glass for the end city because I knew that I was going to be doing this, but, uh, well, I don't think that that'll be enough. So I quickly farmed out some beetroot and broke some lapis and bone meal down into dye, and after combining them a few times, boom, we now have a load of magenta dye. So I turned all my glass purple, and now begins somewhat of a time-consuming project. So you know the water intersection that I made prior? Well, I wanted to make those on the outside, but instead of putting water there, I wanted to make a purple void between the islands because, I don't know, I think it'll look cool. So I got to work on carefully placing down as much magenta stained glass as I could around the outer islands. And well, I'm going to be honest with you, I severely underestimated the numbers once again, and this was not enough glass. So uh, I traded some more and also decided to change the uh, the design slightly and add a layer of blackstone underneath after I'd finished it all. And it wasn't even that scary placing it, considering I have the elytra now, so falling didn't mean non-existent. Anyways, this project took quite a substantial amount of time, but eventually, after repeating the process of destroying a bastion and trading with villagers for glass and placing everything down we finally have a very nice looking void around our islands and well i shall say it looks pretty nice anyways after that entire long and tedious building segment i decided to farm out the mob farm all day to stack up on bones and any other mob drops because i had a plan to build something but it involved me removing the mob farm because it, it's just an eyesore at this point so i decided i may as well grab a load of stuff from it before it goes bye bye Oh, and I also upgraded my bow again because it definitely needed more power. Now it makes things crispy. So, on the following couple days, I spent all day taking down the mob farm and finally began work on building my little pet arctic fox his own snowy paradise right next to my house. With spruce trees and berries, and I think it came out looking pretty nice. I feel like he'll be very welcome and at home here. I mean, just look at him. He looks very happy in there. Okay, so I realize that this is kind of a heavy build video, but uh, I mean, that's kind of the point of one block sky block. So uh, we continue with building ourselves a mini desert temple because these mini builds are kind of cool. But I don't think this one came out looking as good. Okay, it's, it's not that great, but, but hey, I, I tried. Anyways, after building the desert temple, I called it a day and went to bed. And then on the morning of day 157, I woke up and built a jungle temple. And, well, this thing came out looking a little bit better than the desert temple, but maybe not as good as the ocean one, but still kind of cool. I, I like it. I like it. Anyways, after building for quite a few days, I decided to spend the day breaking the block again. After all, it is the title of the video. But, well, almost immediately lost everything to an angry blaze trying to burn down my house. Honestly, I can't think of a better way to start my day. But after swiftly dealing with them, I got back to mining when I was jumped by some piglins, and man, I guess it's just not my day today. But my luck did get better because I found some more ancient debris, so uh, I'm not going to complain. But unfortunately, my happiness was short-lived when these two Satan spawn appeared. Just look at them. Awful. Disgusting. Blech. Anyways, I mined deep into the night and actually ended up finding a Heart of the Sea, which I'll probably never use, so that's, uh, that's super useful to me. Thank you, one block. After mining through the night and nothing else really much happening except finding another villager, on the morning of the next day I put him in a boat and finally set the fox free from its boat. And then I set out to build another island that I'd like to call Lone Villager Island, where it will just be this guy in a house and nothing more. He will spend all eternity living in a 15 by 15 chunk of blocks away from all his friends. Anyways, after the house was done, 
I put the villager in there and boom, we now have Lonely Villager Island. Okay, so on day 161, I decided it's finally time to replace all the torches around my island with lanterns. So I traded with this fine librarian right here for lanterns because they're actually really cheap. Then after trading with him for a while and grabbing enough lanterns, I went around replacing all the torches with them as well as adding them into the aqueducts that I still haven't finished. But finally, by day 163, every torch was now a lantern, excluding some that were specifically placed to be torches. So on day 164, I headed back over to the cobblestone gen island and got to work on mining up some more to finally finish off the aqueducts, to really make this place as secure and good looking as possible. And well, after a day of mining cobblestone, I grabbed some more vines, made some mossy cobble and got to work on finishing the final aqueducts. And well, that brings a close to the longest running project we've had in this series. We started work on this like all the way back on like day 30 or something. I don't know, it's been a long time. But now we have them all done and I really think that they look good. You know, it would probably be better with some fishies in there. But hey, you know, I'm not going to complain. They still look pretty good. Alrighty, day 169. I headed back into the nether and back to the fortress to start tearing some of it down to rebuild in the overworld and create Fortress Island because I'm basically rebuilding everything in the game at this point. Anyways, after I grabbed as much as I needed, I headed back home and began the build, and this one was kind of weird, but I kind of like it at the same time. I, I don't know, but either way, we have another structure rebuilt and ticked off the list. And on the morning of day 170, I got up and moved all my brewing stuff over to the mini fortress because, well, I, I think it just fits there. But then I proceeded to spend two days upgrading my enchantment area because I really wasn't happy with it. It looked kind of crappy and I didn't put much effort into it last time. So a huge shout out to Superphone for the tutorial that I took inspiration from. I basically just did what he did except maybe slightly bigger and less detailed. But uh, yeah, by the night of day 173, the new area was done. And wowee, I really, really like this one. Okay, it looks so much better. So much better. Definitely worth the two days. Anyways, then I headed home, popped a totem accidentally, and then went to bed. Okay, so we're really making our way through these days now, and I think we've made some pretty decent progress, but we only still have two pieces of netherite armor and absolutely no tools, and I'm not gonna lie, that's just not gonna do. So I headed into the nether and went mining in search of netherite, and as usual, in typical poppers fashion, I had no method to it, and I just kind of spam mined all the way around until A, my pick breaks, or B, I find netherite. And luckily in this case, I actually found some pretty quickly. So uh, yeah, this was actually one of the fastest and most successful netherite mining sprees I've ever had. However, after we were done, the nether was, uh, the nether was a mess. But I had enough ancient debris to finish off my armor and make a tool. So I think that's a decent trade-off. So I went home and smelted down all my ancient debris and then made it into some lovely shiny new armor and tools and boom, we are now decked out in hella drip. So after dealing with all the netherite, I actually decided to go and name my dog after one of you guys because why not? So there you go doggo, you are now named Gusbus. So if you want to have something named after you in one of my videos, then just drop a comment down below and hey, you never know, you could probably be like my pet frog or, or something. Yeah, you never know, you never know. Anyways, on day 177, we welcome yet another island into the family, but this time it's a bee farm island. Oh yeah, I've been waiting to build this thing for so long. I love, love, love making bee farms in this game. They're just so colorful and vibrant. I love it. Anyways, after some birch trees, honey blocks, and flowers later, we had our very own little bee farm, and it looks amazing. Just look at them, okay? They're so happy being here. Get it? Being here? <laughs> uh, that was that was awful. Alrighty, it's that time again. Let's quick fire some islands off, shall we? So, starting us off with island number one, we have the Illager slash Pillager Island, where uh, I just built a giant Illager tower in the middle because there can't be villagers without Illagers. Even though I'm pretty sure they're called Pillagers, I don't know what I'm saying anymore, I'm just gonna shut up. On to island number two, the Mushroom Island, because, well, they look cool and my mushroom cows need their own home, so uh, I placed down some mycelium, however you say it, uh, grew some mushrooms, and then brought the cows over to their very own island. Coming in at island number three, we have my least favorite nether biome, the Basalt Delta Island, because, well, I did the two forests and the soul sand one would look awful, so uh, yeah, here we go, Basalt Delta on an island. But after finishing the Basalt Delta, coming in at number four, we have the Trophy Island, because, well, why not? I wanna celebrate some things I've done, sure. Okay, so I think that's enough with the quick fire islands for now because I decided to spend days 87 and 88 reworking Netherland because, well, I really wasn't happy with the way it looked. 
And, well, I've got to say, the rework is probably the single best nether portal I have ever built. It looks so, so good, and I'm very, very happy with it, okay? It's very blue, it's very nice. Day 189 was another block mining day, and, well, I almost immediately found another villager, so I trapped him in a boat and continued on with my thrilling block breaking. When I got jumped by these skeleton horse riding skeletons, that, well, they, they really messed me up and almost made me pop a totem. So I pulled out my bow and made them nice and crispy. And talking about crispy, here's two blazers, but they won't have the chance to burn my island down today. Get out of here. Oh look, it's some more dumb dolphins that just won't comply and swim to the water, so uh, they just kind of swam away. Yeah, sw swam away. Anyways, it started to get dark and not much was happening, so I called it a day and went to bed. Alrighty, day 190, we're almost there. I decided to head over to the storage area and grab the little glass that I had remaining from the, uh, the glass voids and I made it red. Because, well, my nether spawn looked quite bad and I wanted to upgrade it a little bit. So, I got to work on making a little nether base in there, and it came out looking okay. I didn't really have a clear goal in mind, but it could have come out worse, but it also could have come out a lot better. On day 194, I grabbed a load of leaves and began making a hedge maze island, because, well, why not? It looks cool from a bird's eye view, okay? Hedge maze island. We have it now. So after building the hedge maze on day 195, I just went around adding little details everywhere, such as spreading grass around the flowery islands or the trees, and just making them look a little bit more natural, as well as adding some berries and mushrooms to the spruce island, because, well, that's where they naturally grow. After tidying up the island on day 196, I decided to make an end island, like quite literally a mini recreation of the main end island, because, well, I thought it would look kind of cool. But I was missing the end crystals and had no gas tears to make them, so I headed into the nether to hunt a few down and make them cry. Haha, <laughs> you smelly gas! Stinky! Oh, smelly, smelly gas! Okay, that may have been a bit too far, I, I kind of feel bad now. Anyways, after grabbing enough of their tears, I headed back home, crafted some eyes and bought some glass, and boom, we now have the crystals placed down, and it looks just like the end island. Or, at least close enough. Okay, day 199. I woke up and I went and said my goodbyes to Peppermint and Gus, who I actually had to bring inside the house because I ended up leaving near the block for some reason, so uh, yeah, th that was a thing. Anyways, I sorted out some storage for the rest of the day, because if I do end up doing 300 days, I do not want to deal with that again, because it was bad enough this time. And there we have it, we've just survived another 100 days inside of one block skyblock. So as always, thank you all so very, very much for watching the video, I do greatly, greatly appreciate it, and if you found yourself enjoying the video at any point, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing, because it really goes a long way. And also another huge thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video, don't forget to download it using the link below or the QR code on screen right now, and grab your free reward today. But anyways, that's it from me today, stay safe till next time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Adios peeps.